praise the Lord. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. And victory is ours in Jesus' name. As we have come to this Solution Sunday for the month of March, it's the month of miracle for you. It's the day of deliverance. It's the day of dominion. It's the day of breakthrough. And God is bringing amazing things solutions to every problem or predicament that confronts your life in Jesus' name. I know the things are happening because testimonies come back to me about what God is doing, and you will not be an exception. God is going to visit you. Say it out loud. God is going to visit me. If you truly believe it, say it very well. God is going to visit me. And it's going to visit you wonderfully today in Jesus' name. We're going to pray together. And as we pray, I want you to pay attention to the word. Because the word of God is going to be coming forth. And as God's word comes forth, please pay attention. Because he sent his word and the word healed them. He sent his word, the word will deliver them. He sent his word, the Lord will break their chains. He sent his word, the Lord will bring the breakthroughs. And that is exactly what God will do today in Jesus' name. For those online, on Zoom, and YouTube, God is visiting you as well. Please pay attention. Don't be distracted. I know you are at home. Don't be distracted so you can get the best from the Lord today because God's word is coming to you. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you. I bless your name because you have brought us to bless us. I'm asking that, Lord, today you open our eyes of understanding to see the comprehensive benefits and dominion that we have in Christ in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you will send us the word and the word that will bring liberation and deliverance and dominion to your people in Jesus' name. Break every chain. Destroy the works of the devil. I command that every work of the devil of the adversary will be destroyed in Jesus' name. There will be soundness of mind. There will be liberation. You will open the eyes of understanding of your people to behold wondrous, wonderful things out of your word in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, today I want to speak to you on the message that I've titled, Comprehensive Dominion Through Jesus. Comprehensive Dominion Through Jesus. The word dominion is to have ruling power. To have dominion is to have controlling power, ruling power, over someone or something. It means to reign. You reign over. It also means to have authority. And so as I talk about comprehensive dominion, I'm talking about a kind of dominion that is that puts you in charge. You've been on the side of, uh, of a loser. All of a sudden, Christ comes into your life and it brings about a translation and you're translated from the side of being a loser to the side of a winner. You're translated from the side of a victim to the side of a victor. You're translated from the side of defeat to the side of breakthrough and victory. The word comprehensive is total. It means full. It means complete. We're talking about complete dominion. That is, in every area of your life, you have victory. Somebody shout victory. In every area of your family, you have dominion. In every area, in every area. We're not talking about a lopsided victory. You see, there are some people, they only have victory in one area. They may have victory maybe in one area, just maybe in their finances. But the other areas of their lives are just a wreck. But God wants us to have comprehensive victory. That in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body, you are, uh, you are totally in dominion. You have complete victory. 
your mind is at rest. There is nothing troubling your mind. There is peace within you. You are sure also that if you die and leave this world at any time, you'll be in heaven. There is no guilty conscience there. And it's not that you are trying to force the guilty conscience and, so, and use bold face. But there is the peace of God like a river. And the peace that settles within you. We're talking about complete victory. Complete dominion. And this kind of dominion comes from no other person than Jesus Christ. He is the one that has brought victory. Total victory unto us. He is the one that has brought dominion unto man. What Christ Jesus has done is to give man complete power over man's enemies. You see, when you talk about victory, that means there are enemies, there are challenges. And uh, what Christ has done is to look at the enemies of man and to bring man into dominion. To give man power over man's enemies. And that enables you to reign in life. Somebody say, I will reign. And I reign in Jesus Christ. The Lord wants us to reign. He wants us to have dominion. I'm going to show you that. I, you should have known that verse by now. Because I've leveraged and we've looked at this verse before. But I want to show you again. You know, it's like uh, if you have eaten, uh, you've taken a particular sandwich and you like the sandwich. You take it over and over and you don't get tired of it. And no one should get tired of the same verse of scripture. Should anyone get tired of the verse of scriptures? No. Look at this in Romans chapter 5. Romans Chapter 5 and in verse 17, Romans chapter 5 and in verse 17, this is God's plan for your life. This is God's plan for me. Say it out loud. This is God's plan for me. Say it very well. Now look at Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Here the word of God says, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. You know what that is telling us is that we lost out in Adam. Adam was the, God gave Adam dominion. God gave Adam control. God gave Adam dominion. But then because of sin of Adam and Eve, we lost out in Adam. And death passed unto all. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We lost out in Adam. We became losers in Adam. But then Jesus Christ came. Now look at this. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall do what? Shall do what? Shall do what? I can hear you well. Reign in life. When, when are we to reign? Where are we to reign? In life. We are to reign in life by one Jesus Christ. That means we're never to be defeated. We're never to be conquered. Not to be conquered by sin. Not to be conquered by every, anything coming from the wicked one. It says those who have come now to Christ. They have received abundance of grace. Somebody say abundance of grace. You see, there's so much grace from Christ. The Bible says and of his fullness have we all received. And grace for grace, grace for grace, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by the Lord Jesus Christ. So much grace is in, in Christ. The Bible says we've received the abundance of grace. Whatever God gives, there's so much in God, so much in God. It says the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. We couldn't be righteous by ourselves. We couldn't be righteous in our strength. But we have received the gift of, of righteousness. Shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one that helps us to reign. And it's comprehensive dominion that we have in Christ. Now, what we're going to do at, at during this message is to pick three enemies of man. These are the major enemies of man. And other enemies you might think about, they, they, they come out of these three enemies. And those three enemies, God will give you dominion over them in Jesus' name. And so, I'm talking about the dominion we have over sin. The dominion we have over sickness. The dominion we have over Satan. 
those are three major enemies of mankind. And you see, for example, sin does not know whether you are educated or not. Satan does not know whether you are educated or not. Sickness does not know whether you are president or not. Uh, haven't you seen that even at the time of the pandemic, uh, top people have been sick with, with, with COVID-19? And so sin, sickness, they don't know who you are. They don't know whether you are, you are these or that, whether you have been highly educated or not. Because of those are enemies of man. But thank God, today is the day of your dominion and victory in Jesus Christ. Look at the word of God, dominion over sin. In Rome, look at this in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, and I'm going to read here from verse 1. Luke chapter 19, verse 1. I want you to see what God is saying here. As the word of God introduces us to a man. This was a rich man. This was a wealthy man. This was a, a well-known man. This was a popular man. But there was guilt in his heart. Sin was an enemy of his life. He had money, but he had no peace. He had, mon he had popularity, but there was no peace in his heart. There was an enemy. Look at this in Luke 19 verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. And behold, there was what? A man named what? Zacchaeus. I, I want you to think about that. You see, God's word is not just, it's, it's about real people. It's about real people going through real things in life. And the Bible tells us there was this man. He even has a name. And this man is called Zacchaeus. And the Bible tells us he was the chief among the publicans. And he was what? And he was what? Rich. That tells us he was not. Look at his pedigree. Look at his status. Look at his, the man's status. He was a rich man. He was also a chief. The chief among the publicans. So he was, no, he was not a mean man. He was not an average man. This was a wealthy man. This was a popular man. This was an important man in the society. But I want you to see something here as the Lord introduces us to this man in verse, verse 2. And behold, in verse 3, and he sought to see Jesus. And he sought to see Jesus. Think about that. The popularity couldn't replace Jesus. The wealth could not replace Jesus. And the opportunities he had in life could not replace Jesus. I'm telling you something. There is nothing in this world that can replace Jesus from the vacuum in the heart of man. Everyone on the surface of heart, whether they agree or not, have a God-shaped vacuum in their heart. There is a space in their heart that only Christ can fill. That only Christ can take care of. And so you find this man. This man is sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press. The word press here is the much people. The much people, much people wanted to see Jesus. The Bible says, and the common people had him gladly. Because Jesus is the solution to every problem of man. He, won, he came into this world to help us. He came to solve the problem of man. To remember where we read before. What we lost in Adam, we got back in Christ. And so he could not because of the press. Because he was little of stature. He was, uh, he was uh, not tall as an individual. Now look at verse 4. And he ran before. What will make a wealthy man to run? What will make a popular man to run? What will make a rich man to run? It must be serious, isn't it? It must be a need, isn't it? I'm telling you, the problem of sin does not know status. It does not know that whether you are a professor or whether you are a politician. It does not know whether you have so much name, your popularity in the world. This man, he ran before to see Jesus. He ran and he climbed up a sycamore tree. What will make a rich man to climb a tree? 
What will make a wealthy, popular man to climb a tree? I'm telling you something. There is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of man that only Christ can fill. And those who reject Christ, they do it to their damnation because there is no other name given amongst men under heaven whereby we might be saved. Jesus is the Savior, the only Savior. So this man ran so that he could have an encounter with the Lord. Now look at what happens. He says to see him, to see him. As we're in church today, who have you come to see? Who have you come to see? Jesus, Jesus, whenever we come to church, we have not come to see the pastor. We have not come to see the preacher. We have not come to see, uh, uh, of course, we see ourselves and we're happy to see ourselves. But the primary person we have come to see is who? Tell me his name. Jesus, that's the only person. We're gathered around the name of Jesus. There will be no church without Jesus. There will be no hope without Jesus. There will be no life without Jesus. There will be no way without Jesus. There will be emptiness without Jesus. And so it, 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 it went that way to see him, to see Jesus, for he was to pass that way. Verse 5, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up. He looked up. Jesus came there. He looked up. Why? Because Christ was thinking about Zacchaeus. You see, the Lord loves you. Say it out loud. God loves me. One more time. God loves me. God loves everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved, can be saved. And so because of the love of God in the heart of Christ, he got to that place and he looked up and saw him and said unto him. He looked up, he saw him and said unto him. You see, God customizes our salvation. Even though there are many, there are billions of people in this world, you are special to God. Say it out loud, I'm special to God. I'm special in the eyes of God. You see, that's why your fingerprints are unique. That's why many things about you are different. There is no single person, there is not another person exactly like you. You are special to God. And so Jesus came. He looked up and then saw him and said unto him. I wonder what Jesus said unto him. What, what does Jesus say to people in need? What does Jesus say to people that need salvation? Look at what Christ said. Zacchaeus, make haste and calm down for today. Somebody say today. Say it very well. Say it very well. As you are hearing me on YouTube and on Zoom, even though I may not be able to hear you on YouTube, say it wherever you are. It says, for today, I must abide at thy house. I want you to see something in the statements of our Lord and Savior here. Jesus said, today, not tomorrow. He said, this very day. This is the day of your salvation. As you're hearing me now, whether in the sanctuary or on the different platforms, today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day of the forgiveness of your sins. No, no matter how many your sins are, God is able to forgive all sins. He's able to cleanse you and remove the guilt of sin from your life. Today is your day of salvation. Today is your day of deliverance. Today is your day of dominion. It says for today, for today. Now, another thing I want you to see in the, in the statement of Jesus is this. He said, I must. Somebody say, he must. Say it very well. The word must is an imperative. He says, it's a decision that has been made. I must abide at thy house. I must abide at thy house. I want you to pay attention. Please look up here. Jesus wants to abide in your house. But the challenge is this. You are the only one that can open that house. Jesus never gate crashes. Jesus never opens the door and forces himself in. He does not do that. You are the only one 
that can open the door of your house. He said, I stand at the door and knock. Because I will not get crash. I will not door crash. I will come if you allow me. I want to come. But you have got to allow me. The problem of sin, I've got to come. But you've got to allow me. Today, you will say yes to Jesus. When you say yes to Jesus, it will come in. And victory will be yours in Jesus' name. I must abide at thy house. What happens when the victor stays with you? What happens when a strong person stays with a weak person? That weak person will become strong. That weak person will become strong. Uh, haven't you seen sometimes uh, uh, you have a bully that tries to bully a little child? And that particular day, mom comes along with that child. Or dad comes along with that child. And then that little child says, he looks at the bully like this. The, the, before, before that time, if the boy sees the bully, it begins to run. If the boy sees the bully, it begins to cry. But this very day, as mom begins to walk with the child, or dad begins to walk with the child, how do you expect that that child will walk? What do you expect that that child will do? The child will march majestically. The child will look at the bully like this and say, what can you now do when you allow Jesus to abide in your house? That poor sin that has put your back down, you, the sin will no longer have dominion over you. That's what happens when Christ comes in and we give him the chance. Look at verse 6. And he made haste. He said yes to Jesus, and he came down and received him. How? How? Joyfully, joyfully, joyfully. Christ brings good news. How do you receive good news? Tell me, how do you receive good news? Maybe you are you are still trying to figure it out. Suppose you are called in the, uh, to the office, and your boss says, uh, uh, we've been seeing how you've been walking. And we appreciate your hard work. And because of your hard work, we have decided to promote you. And uh, the moment you hear we have decided, because of your hard work, we've decided to promote you, what comes out of your mouth? What comes out of your face? There's joy. There's, uh, there's gladness there. And then it says, we're not just promoting you. We're also giving you a salary increase, a wage increase. What happens to you? How do you receive that, that news? How do you receive that news? With a frown? Whoever receives promotion with a frown? Anybody in his right mind now? Anybody? Nobody. When you, are, when you receive promotion, you receive it joyfully. When you receive Christ, you receive him how? Joyfully. And then verse 7, And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he's going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. All the people knew that he was a sinner. It was a public sinner, publican. It was a sinner that was well known. But Jesus Christ said, I must today, I must abide at thy house. And Jesus never leaves people the same way he met them. The moment you accept Christ into your heart, it begins a great work. Somebody say, great work. Somebody say, great work. What great work does Christ do when we accept him into our lives? It brings about a change. It brings about transformation. It brings about a change. And so it begins a great work in our lives. It turns our lives around. And as it turns our lives around, look at what happens in verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the, unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. Now, the love of money is no longer there. When a person truly loves Christ, the love of money is not going to be there. The love of money is gone. Behold, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by any, by false accusation, um, I restore him fourfold. I give back what I have taken wrongfully. Because now I love God more than money. I love people more than money. I want to be a blessing to people's life. I want to be a blessing to the life of people. Verse 9, and Jesus said unto him, this day. Somebody say this day. 
Is salvation come to, thy, to this house? For as much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man, Jesus, is come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why Christ came. And today, if you realize that there is sin in your life, then the Lord is able to forgive you in Jesus' name. I can hear your amen. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. And then I want you to see something in verse 12. Romans chapter 6. Look at these. And we're going to read verse 12. It says in Romans chapter 6, verse 12, Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body. That means, let not sin have dominion over you. Now that Christ has come to you, now that you are a child in the kingdom, sin shall not have dominion over you. In verse 1 of that same Romans chapter 6, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we say we are Christians and we live like everybody else and we say we are Christians? I can't hear your answer. No. There must be difference between light and darkness. Is there any difference between light and darkness? Yes. And it's a clear difference. And uh, is there any difference between God and Satan? Yes. And it's a clear difference difference when we're truly born of God, when we're truly born again, when our names are written in the Lamb's book of life, when there's a change in us, then there's also what? A difference that what God has made. Look at that verse 12 again of Romans chapter 6. It says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. You see, what Christ actually does is when it comes into our lives, it gives us power to say no to sin. I, I want you to think about this picture. It's the picture of somebody that is weak. If somebody is weak in himself and a strong person comes into him, what will happen? The weak can then say, I am strong. Jesus is the strong person. We cannot overcome temptation by our own power. But it comes into us and it lives big inside of us. And we are able to say no to temptation. That's why the Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons and daughters of God. We become sons of God. We become children of God because we have been given power to live the victorious life. So it tells us that sin should not have, that should not reign in our body. That's what it tells us in that verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Now look at verse 14. For sin, verse 14 of Romans 6, for sin shall not have what? Shall not have what? Dominion over you. You see, comprehensive dominion. Through Jesus, sin shall not have dominion over you. You reign over sin. You have dominion over sin. And it does not have dominion over you. Let, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Say this out loud after me. For sin shall not have dominion over me. One more time. For sin shall not have dominion over me. One more time. For sin shall not have dominion over me. Do you see, that's the victorious life of the child of God. The things that have dominion over others, they cause like anything, they, they lie like anything, they do things anyhow. It does not even bother their conscience. They just act anyhow. Because you are now in the light, not in darkness. Sin will not have dominion over you in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I want you to see something in verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and in verse, what verse? 17, very good. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, therefore, when sin does not have dominion over you, now that you are a new creature, therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, you are in Christ, you are a new creature. You see, religion is not what makes us new creatures. It's not religion that makes us new creatures. It's Christ that makes us who? 
new creatures. If you're going to be a new species, if you're going to be a new person, it's not the new year that makes you a new person. You see, there are people, they're always waiting for the new year. And they set their goals for the new year. It's good to set goals. It's good to have great desires. But you see, a new year does not automatically make you a new creature. It's only Christ that does what makes us new creatures. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I like that. Not that he will be a new creature. You see, there are some people, they think that, well, when you give your life to Christ, in this world, you cannot be new. That only when you die, mm -mm, it does not work like that. The Bible says, the moment you give your life to Christ, you become a new creature. The Bible says, see, it's like this. He that has the Son has life. If you have the Son of God, if you have Jesus in you, you have life. He that has the Son, Jesus, has life. And so we become new creatures when we're in Christ. And it tells us old things are passed away. What are the things that are passed away? Old things. The old lifestyle. The old attitude. The old behavior. is passed away. You see, when you truly have met Christ, people can see that you're a new person. People can see, and God can see that you're a new person. It says all things are passed away. My question to you is this, what has passed away in your life? Are the cause words passed away? Is the line passed away? Is the attitude, bad attitude to others passed away? Is the wickedness passed away? You see, there are people, they are so wicked. They are wicked to their, uh, to their family members. They are wicked to their loved ones. They are wicked. They are even wicked to their, to their pets, their dogs and cats. They are so wicked. If you are truly a new person, the old things are passed away. And then he says, what then has happened? Behold. Somebody shout, behold. I want to hear you better. Behold. Take a look at it. Take a look at it. All things are become what? New. Now, please look up here. Can you tell the difference between a freshly baked bread and the one that has been baked two months ago? Can you tell the difference? Is there any difference? Okay. Can you tell the difference between a brand new car and a car that is 15 years old? Can you? Yes. You can tell the difference when people have met Christ. It's not difficult to tell. The old man is gone. There's a new person now. Oh, what a great change since I became born again. The things I used to do, I do them no more. That's what Christ does in our lives. Christ gives us dominion over sin. How do we become children born again? In Romans chapter 10. Look at Romans Chapter 10, and then in verse 8, Romans chapter 10, and in verse 8, see the word of the Lord. It says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. I told you that you've got to accept Christ to come in. It's not going to door crash. It's not going to gate crash. It's not going to force himself in. You've got to allow him to come in. And how do you do that? By your words and by faith in your heart. You believe what you have heard that Jesus died on the cross for you. That's what he's telling us here. Look at verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe Jesus died for me. And now he becomes my Lord. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe, you believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, then what will happen? Thou shalt be saved. It's so simple as that. You accept, you believe, you confess. You believe what Jesus has done. It's as simple as A, B, C. You accept the word of salvation. You believe Jesus died for you. You confess him as your Lord and Savior. And then the Bible says, thou shall be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart, the heart. When the Bible talks about the heart, it's not talking about the organ that pumps blood that you have. 
It's talking about your inner man. It's talking about the spirit person. It's talking about the inner you, the real you. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever, 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 high or low, whosoever, man, man or woman, whosoever, boy or girl, young or old, whosoever, it does not matter the nationality, it does not much matter where you're coming from, it does not even matter your background, whosoever believes on him shall not be what? Ashamed. When you believe on the Lord, you will not be ashamed. Because it will take away your sins and your life will be new in Jesus' name. So, we've talked about dominion over sin. Somebody shout, dominion over sin. Amen. Amen. Now, another enemy of man is sickness. Sickness is an enemy. Let nobody deceive you. Let nobody say God is giving him sickness to humble you, humble him or her. You know, there are some people that say, well, you know, maybe this sickness is just to humble me. God does not do that. It's not a wicked God. God does not give you sickness to humble you. If that's the case, why then are you going to the hospital? Because you, you say God is giving you sickness. Why are you trying to come out of what God is trying to do, to do to you if that's the case? God is not the author of sickness. Satan is the enemy of people. I said Satan is the enemy of people. You know what the Bible says? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Why don't I show you so that you can see it in Acts chapter 10. Look at Acts chapter 10 and in verse 38. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing what? Doing what? When somebody is sick, is that good? No, maybe you are not convinced. I need to know whether you are convinced or not. When somebody is sick, is that good? Is that good? No, maybe because I say when somebody, if you are sick, is that good for you to be sick? It's not good. Because when you are sick, you spend money in the hospital. When you're sick, you're not able to do the things you should do. When you're sick, you're not able to accomplish all that you should accomplish in life. The Bible says Jesus went about doing good. Now watch, watch out. And healing all that were oppressed of who? Of who? The devil. The devil is the oppressor. The devil is the wicked person. The devil is the enemy. Jesus went about... He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. It should be crystal clear in your mind, therefore, that God wants you to be healed from sicknesses. God wants you to be delivered from sicknesses. Now, look at this in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. And then, today is your day of deliverance. I said, today is your day of deliverance. Whatever the enemy has done, that which the enemy has done will be undone in Jesus' name. Actually, this is what will happen. I, I, I think about this. Here you have your, you are typing on the computer. And as you are typing, you felt this is not supposed to be there. What do you do when it's not supposed to be do? there? You press the key to do what? To delete it. Today, there will be a delete. Spiritual, supernatural delete. God is going to delete from the life of the people as we pray and believe God. Every sickness in Jesus' name. Can I hear you shout the word delete? One more time. One more time. Sicknesses will be deleted. Oppressions will be deleted. The works of the devil will be deleted. As we mention the name, that is the key. The name of Jesus will delete everything contrary in your life in Jesus' name. Now, Matthew chapter 8. Look at the word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 8. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 8. And then I want you to see something in verse 1. Here, when Jesus has spoken to the people. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. 
and the leper didn't know that it's the will of God to heal him. And so he said, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. I want you to understand from what the leper said here. He had no doubt that the Lord can heal him. He just was wondering, is it the will of God or not? And I want you to understand, there must be no doubt that God, that Christ can heal you. Now, the question is, is it the will of God or not? I've got to tell you, it's the will of God. Look at this in verse 3. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, what? Say those two words very clearly. Say them in a louder way. I will, I will, I will. God says, I will to you. I will to heal you. I will to deliver you. I will to help you. I will to liberate you. It says, I will be thou clean. And what's the next word? Shout that word. Shout that word. Immediately, as we pray, there'll be an immediate impact of the prayer. There'll be deliverance that is visible. There'll be dominion that is tangible. In Jesus' name. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Jesus, the great physician. Jesus, the great healer. Look at verse 4. Look at, why don't we go to verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. The one we saw before was the personal person. In this case, this was somebody that was pleading on the behalf of a, of a loved person. And if you're here in the sanctuary and there's somebody that is a loved person that is sick, you know today you can pray. We can pray here and God can touch that person. The person you are concerned for, the person you want the Lord to intervene on the behalf, the Lord is able and there is no distance, there is no barrier in the spiritual realm. See, distance is not a barrier in the spiritual realm. We pray here and God moves over there several thousand miles away because God is still mighty. Look at it. And Jesus said unto him, what follows? I will come. It's always the will of God. He wants to heal. He wants to deliver. He wants to set free. I will come and heal him. And then this man said, speak the word only and my servant will be healed. And he spoke the word and the servant was healed. And today as the word of God is spoken, you will be healed. Your loved ones will be healed. We don't need to touch you. We don't need to do anything like that. Just the word of command and it is done in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to see something from the uh, word of the Lord here in verse 14. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. Whatever the category of the sickness. S fever, um, leprosy, palsy, whatever it is. It says Jesus came to the house, to Peter's house, and saw the mother in law sick of a fever and it touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them isn't jesus good isn't the lord good now verse 16 when the even even was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word. He cast out the spirit with his word. That's how we cast out spirits today. We cast out spirits with the word of God. That's it. And healed all that were sick. How many were healed? How many were healed? Don't exclude yourself when God has included you. He healed all that were sick. If you don't exclude yourself, you will be healed in Jesus' name. I said you will be healed in Jesus' name. The Bible says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. It took them away. You must not carry them anymore. 
I said you must not carry them anymore. That's the word of the Lord. And as you believe the word of God today, healing is yours in Jesus' name. I said healing is yours in Jesus' name. That's the promise of God. Point number, th the final point, point number three, is your dominion over Satan. Somebody say dominion over Satan. You see, Satan is the enemy of man. It's the great enemy of man. He does not like you. He does not like you. In fact, the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us the agenda of Satan. And look at this in John chapter 10 verse 10. Look at the agenda of Satan that the Lord tells us here. Look at this in John 10.10. 10. The thief, the devil is the thief. The thief, the very first, the very word thief. Does that, does that make you have a comfortable feeling when you hear thief? Does it? No. It's the thief. The thief comes not. It's the one that comes to steal your health. It's the one that comes to steal your wealth and your finances. It's the one that comes to steal your peace. It's the one that comes to steal your joy. It doesn't like anything to be at peace. It doesn't like anything to be peaceful. It looks at the family. It says, why are they smiling? That's what the devil does. God says, I want them to smile. I want them to be glad. Satan says, mm -mm, why are they smiling? I will cause trouble that will change, that will make them sad. But today, he has failed. I said, today he has failed. The thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Anything good about stealing? Anything good about killing? Anything good about destruction? No, those are the three things the devil comes to do. I want you to notice this. The devil is good for nothing. He's good for nothing. He has nothing to add to your life. That's why the Bible says, resist the devil. But before you can successfully resist the devil, you must submit therefore unto God. And then you will have the power to resist the devil. If you don't submit to God, you can't resist the devil. But when you submit to God, then you have the power to resist the devil. And then when you resist him, he will flee from you. But that's not the end of the story in John 10.10. 10. Look at what Jesus said. I am come. That they might have life. And that they might have it how? Abundantly. Abundant life. Abundant joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. The Lord wants your peace to be like a river. He wants your rest to be so much. The Bible says God wants to give you peace at all costs. God wants to help you at all costs. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will do what? I will give you rest. The devil wants to give you trouble. Jesus says, I will give you what? Rest. And today, you are getting the rest in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And we're going to be getting ready to pray soon. Mark chapter 16. And I want you to see something in verse 17. Mark 16, 17. Why don't we look at these from the word of God? Why don't we back up to verse 16? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. We must believe the word of the Lord. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. You see, we've got to believe God's word for the signs to follow. The sign of healing, the sign of deliverance, the sign of dominion. And these signs shall follow them that do what? Believe. What are the signs that will follow? Look at the very first sign that is mentioned here. In my name shall they cast out what? Devils. In his name. As long as you believe in Christ. Born of God. Satan is no longer the one tro troubling your life. You are no longer afraid of Satan. You have the power, the dominion to cast him out. See that. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall cast out devils. That means they will exercise authority over Satan. They have dominion over Satan. 
If you're born of God, now you put the devil on the run. He hears you beginning to pray like this, he run away. He hears that you mention the name of Jesus, he says, I cannot stand. That's what happens. And it happens because of the name of Jesus. He said, in my name. In whose name? In whose name? In the name of Jesus. That's the authority we have. That's the dominion we have. When we say, Satan, get out in Jesus' name. He said, yes, sir, I understand. He runs away. You see, that's what a victory we have. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing accidentally, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Any sickness here will be recovered. Any demonic trouble here will be recovered. The glory of God will come over your life in Jesus' name. And today is your day of, dem of dominion. I said, it's your day of dominion. Before I pray with you, I want to show you a verse of scripture. I don't want you to forget it. Very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And then look at this in verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith. You see, they signs shall follow them that believe. When you believe, you have faith in God. God is a faith God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We must trust God. It says we have in the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Remember what we saw in Romans. If you will confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Those two things are important. You believe. You confess. What you say must match what God has said. When you say what God has said, you agree with God, and then God can work on your behalf. Because can two walk together except they be agreed? It is as you agree with God and you confess his word that dominion will be your portion. Now we're going to pray. How many of you are ready for dominion? Now rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Maybe I'm going to show you one special verse. Now that you have risen on your feet. And the more the reason, you should rise on your feet. Because this verse will help you to understand something. Look at Romans chapter 16. And in verse 20. Romans 16. Verse 20. And the God of peace. And the God of peace. The God who wants you to have peace. The, one, the God who wants you to be at peace. The God who wants you to be peaceful shall bruise Satan. Where? Where? Now you understand why you need to stand up. He will bruise Satan under your feet shortly. As we begin to pray, sin under your feet. As we begin to pray, sickness under your feet. As we begin to pray, Satan under your feet. And there will be definite manifestation in Jesus' name. Whatever you need from God today, this is Solution Sunday. God is bringing solution. Is bringing solution. If there's any pain anywhere in your body, you will put your hands there when I give the instruction and the pain will vanish. I said the pain will vanish. Whatever it is that the enemy has done, today we will do what? Delete. I said today we will do what? Delete in Jesus' name. Oh, let's bow and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. I want to pray for those who want to give their hearts to Jesus. That's the beginning. That's the very beginning. 
where dominion comes from. Dominion over sin. God bless you. Raise your hand. God, God bless you. I see some sincere people already. God bless you. You want to have dominion over sin. For those on Zoom and on YouTube, do the same thing. You want to give your heart to Christ. Lord, forgive my sins. Tell the Lord to forgive your sins. You remember you have to accept him. You have to allow him to come in. It's not going to force himself in. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for the things that I have done. Contrary to your word, he will forgive you. And he will give you power over sin. 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 That's what Christ will do today. As you have confessed your sins, you confess and you believe in your heart. You believe in your heart that the Lord has forgiven you now. And then your life will never be the same. And then I will pray for you and the glory of God will visit you. Amen. Now, I want to pray for everyone as well. So we combine it. Put your hands down. Now we're going to pray in general. For everyone. I want you to identify any sickness in your body. Any pain in your body. Any demonic affliction in your body. You, you raise up one hand and you put the other hand there. God is going to be touching you now. Yes, God is going to be touching you now. You put one hand to where the pain is, you raise the other hand. God is going to touch you now. Remember, the power is in the name of Jesus. If there's anything contrary, that you're looking to God for solution today, solution has finally come. It's your day of solution. Whatever the problem, whatever the difficulty, Solution has finally come. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless your name and I magnify you. Because you will never fail. Lord, I pray for those who have given their hearts to you. I pray for them now that you confirm their salvation in Jesus' name. Give them the power to go and sin no more. Translate them according to your word. From the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give them the power to say no to sin. Lord, I pray, give them dominion. Help them to reign over sin. And that they become new creatures right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. Now I pray for your people that have pains, sicknesses, diseases, Whatever the situation is, they've raised up their hand. They've placed the other hand where the pain is. Knowing that Jesus Christ is the great physician that takes away sicknesses. He healed them all. And they have included themselves because God included them. They have not excluded themselves from the healing of the Lord. I pray for them now. That sickness in the body. I come against you in the name of Jesus. I command that sickness, come out in Jesus' name. Any pain in that body, any pain in that body, whatever the pain is, wherever the pain is, whether on the edge, whether in the tummy, whether in the back, whether on the legs, whether in the waist, whether in the chest area, wherever the pain is, whether it's high blood pressure, whatever the pain is, any disease over there, I command you now, in the name of Jesus, come out in Jesus' name. I pray now that the healing of the Lord will flow into their bodies. The healing of the Lord will flow into their bodies from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be delivered in Jesus' name. Right now, Lord, I thank you because victory is ours over Satan. Where there is demonic affliction, demonic oppression that has made individuals to lose their mind. The mind is not sound anymore. I command that demonic oppression 
and that activity of Satan. Poor devil, I command you to lose your hold and clear out now in Jesus' name. The word of God says the Lord will bruise Satan under our feet shortly. Right now, Satan, you belong under our feet and you get there now in Jesus' name. Leave the bodies of the people of God. Leave the families of the people of God. Leave the finances of the people of God. Leave the health of the people of God. Leave the joy of the people of God. I pray right now, everything that the enemy has done, everything that the devil has done, in the name of Jesus, we delete it in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for the answer. I bless and magnify you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of God said, Can I hear your amen one more time? Amen. Please be seated. We well, thank God for, for, for you, for bringing you to the service today. And as the Lord has brought you, I know you have been blessed. You speak continuously now in line with the word of God. You don't say, I'm down anymore, you are up now. You don't say, I'm defeated, you are, you have overcome, you are an overcome, overcomer now. You don't say, you're a loser, you're a winner now. You don't say, you're a victim, you're a victor now. And you speak in line with the word of God. Because you are a success in Jesus Christ. God bless you. We've come to the end of the service. We have some snacks. So please say, get some snacks, nice snacks, before you leave today. Have a wonderful rest of the week. And God 